This is the new Porsche Taycan Cross Turismo and it's the world's first ever mass-produced electric estate car. What about the MG5? The MG5, all right. Okay, this is the world's first mass-produced electric estate car that can also do a bit of off-roading. Oh yeah, I'm gonna tell you a bit more about the off-roading of this car a bit later on in this video. I'll be talking you through the inside, the outside, I'll be taking it for a drive, and of course, I'm gonna test out its performance. I'm Matt Watson, and you're watching CarWow. Buying a new car? Then head to CarWow, and my team will help you find your next car at a fair price. CarWow your one-stop car buying comparison site. Let's start this video by talking about the price. So the Porsche Taycan Cross Turismo starts from just over 79,000 pounds. That's for the entry level four model. This is a turbo and this costs from 117,000 pounds. And like for like, this estate version of the Taycan is about 1,000 pounds more than the normal model still pretty expensive. So if you're after an electric car that's also an estate and you want to save some cash over this, then click on the pop-out banner up there to go check out the alternative <laughs> electric estate car. And the offer you can get on it through CarWow. You'll be amazed. I've sent you to that because we don't actually sell Porsches directly through CarWow, though you can lease them through CarWow. Now, if you want to check that out or just check out reviews and deals on any other car, simply Google help me car wow and me and my team will help you choose the right car for you and get it for a fair price from one of our trusted car wow dealers right let's talk about the car's design because this is the biggest change over the normal Taycan and it's this rear end here it's a very sporting estate car we're not talking volvos from the 1970s are we i mean look at how rake right that rear screen is and oh look it even has a windscreen wiper on it and that's standard normally on porsches you have to pay extra for a rear windscreen wiper you did on my old 996 some other features on this car lots of black plastic cladding to make it look off-roady and this car is actually fitted with an extra off-road pack which includes this element here which actually looks more race car -y than off-roady, but more on that in a bit. Something that hasn't changed is the light bar. You still get the cool light bar at the rear with Porsche in it as well. Moving on the side, they get new alloy wheel designs on the Taycan Cross Turismo. Really nice designs. They start at 19 inches in diameter, rising to 20s as standard on the turbo, though these are the graded 21s. So here's some more of the off-roady cladding, and you've probably noticed as well, it sits slightly higher off the ground than the standard Taycan. It's 20 millimeters higher on average to the various settings of its air suspension. Though when you have it in the very utmost setting, it's then 30 millimeters higher than the standard Taycan on its air suspension. Here's some more of these off-road pack upgrades that this car has. Like these spats here, this bit of trim here, and this spat here. Off-road design pack? I'm sure it's way more like a kind of racing track design pack. But anyway, let's carry on around. So this is standard though. Look, the extra cladding over here. And once again, look, we've got more fins here at the front as part of the off-road design pack. In case you're wondering, it's about £1,400 extra. And you can choose different colours for these inserts here. You can have it plain black or this one is called Vesuvius Grey. You can see that the front bumper is different to the normal Taycans. The rest of the front though is the same. So you've got the cool light design air vents there good looking car what do you think though do you prefer the look of this estate version of the Taycan or the standard car let me know in the comments here on the inside the Taycan Cross Turismo in the front at least is identical to the normal Taycan so it's a very lovely place to sit the material quality is excellent everything feels super solid so much so that if you bash your arm off it it can hurt you've also got these amazing screens here. So let me talk about the digital driver's display. Very clear. You can cycle through different menus and show different displays. Really like the curved screen on that. It looks gorgeous. Then you've got the main infotainment screen here, which you operate as a touch screen like that. It's got voice commands as well, which are a little bit hit and miss. And you can control it as well using this bit here as a mouse pad. Now that is harder to do, especially when you're driving and you end up with a big, dirty, greasy mess on it as well. From your greasy fingers you have to control the climate control through there though it's not so bad though because you're just stabbing away but once again you are having to look down there to do it though of course you can try and use the voice commands and see if they'll understand what you're saying now this guy has the upgraded optional extra screen for the passenger there i actually wouldn't bother with one of those because you don't want your passenger messing around choosing songs because they might have a little bit of a dig at you look hmm Anyway, you don't want them changing things when you're driving. Speaking of driving, the driving position in this car is lovely. And there's lots of adjustment in the steering wheel. In, out, down and up. And in the seats. So these are the 18-way adjustable sports seats. If you want to, you can have 14-way adjustable comfort seats instead. I'll go with the sports seats. They just hold you a little bit better. In terms of other areas of practicality, look. 
huge cup holders there, clearly aimed at the American market for people who like to go for a big drive through for one of those big bladder busters. <laughs> That's the word I want it. One of those big bladder buster drinks, and even the door bins are large as well. Look at that. So they've thought about practicality as well, and there's an extra storage area under there if you want it, and of course a glove box of very modest proportions. Nice car inside the front here. If a little bit dark, especially when you've got the black interior like this, it is a bit dark. It's also quite dark here in the back. Part of the reason for that is that the rear windows are quite shallow, and that's to help the car still look sporty from side on, despite the fact its roof is higher than the normal Taycans. In fact, you've got almost five centimetres more headroom than in the normal Taycan. Look at that, sitting up straight. Loads of headroom, knee room's good as well. What's not so good though is foot space. There are these areas cut out in the floor to give you a bit more foot room. Same as in an Audi e-tron GT. In fact, if you'd like to see my full in-depth video review of that car, because it shares many of its parts with this Taycan, click on the pop-out banner up there to go watch that video. Anyway, my issue with this is that because these seats are quite low in the front, and people who are driving this car probably gonna wanna sit low for that sporty feel, but you can't really stretch out so you can just get a bit achy in the old ankles on longer journeys. This particular car is fitted with the two plus one rear seat arrangement. Normally the car has just two individual rear chairs, but this one has an extra little space there if you need to carry somebody, but only very occasionally, because it's quite a narrow seat. You've got to obviously straddle this big center console here. But there is enough headroom here that you do feel like you're sitting on a stool, which isn't gonna be great considering how fast this car can go. Now, if you need to carry a very small child, look, you've got ice fix angle points here on both outer rear seats. Now, you do have to remove the covers and there's a chance then you'll lose them so they don't just flip up like they're doing some other cars. Can't fault this though. Look, you can fold down this central seat if no one is sitting there and then you can use it to carry longer items if you've been to the DIY store or maybe your skis. They're really probably going to carry your skis in a roof box, aren't you? Another thing to point out is, look, this one's got the upgraded four zone climate control, which is really nice to use, but obviously you have to pay extra for that. There's a little storage tray there for your phone in the back. It doesn't fit my big phone though. And you might be thinking, wait a minute, where are the USB ports? Hopefully your dealer will tell you that they're here, neatly hidden away. Otherwise you're probably gonna have this car and think it's not got any USB ports in the back. But I'm sure if you've got kids, they'd soon find them. Overall, hey, well, it's not bad back here. One good thing about the Taycan compared to say, Panamera is because there's no internal combustion engine under the bonnet, you have a front boot, a fruit, like on a Cayman or a 911. It's got an 84 litre capacity, which is room for about two of these charging cable bags. God, this is heavy actually. But of course you've got a boot at the back as well. This is where the estate body style really pays dividends because instead of the Taycan's normal small saloon boot opening, you've got this big wide opening with this lift back tailgate. There is a bit of a load lift to lift stuff over, which is annoying when you're trying to lug in your heavy cables. But you'd have a bit more room than the normal Taycan, 446 litres. I want to show you this, look, you've got some tie down points, <laughs> which is handy. So you can actually attach this bag with these carabiners so that when you're hooning it on a twisty road, they're flying about all over the place. Though it does say, not for climbing. There's some more tie down points here and here. You've got some storage here. Got a strappy there. There's a 12 volt socket. You've also got, look, oh, there we go. You've got hooks to hang stuff off. A little bit of storage under here for some more cables. And if you want to, you can, of course, fold down the rear seats. It's a bit annoying having to lean all the way in like this ah, to carry longer items. Look, see, one word of warning though, if you get a car with an upgraded sound system with a big subwoofer, it goes in the boot, somewhere underneath the boot floor. And that reduces your boot capacity by about 40 litres. And that brings you on to five annoying things about the Porsche Taycan Cross Turismo. You see this part of the dash here, the way it protrudes into a point. As you get behind the steering wheel, sometimes you can end up just like, ah, whacking the side of your knee on it. <laughs> I know I hand that up, but it's still hard. When you fold down the armrest here in the back, you'll notice two cup holders there. Great if you want to use them, but when you're not, it means that really you can't ever use this armrest because you just end up in the cup holder and it's uncomfortable, it's not relaxing. Do you want to see how far the rear windows go down? Look at this. 
that's not much more than halfway. Estate cars usually have quite useful retractable tonneau covers, whereas this has a very posh feeling, but slightly more awkward, solid parcel shaft. Look, and it comes in two pieces, like that. And then there's nowhere really to store it in the car. So it's gonna get crushed if you load the boot full of stuff. I'm driving along in my Porsche Taycan Cross Turismo and I'm coming to a toll booth. Okay, I need to pay them. Right, I'll just get my wallet, don't worry, it's in here. Bear with me. It's in. Oh. Oh. I have to reach around. Now, if this had been a Mercedes, I could have pressed the button there and both parts would have opened up separate like that and I'd have been able to go straight in with my right hand. Not in this. Anyway, better pay them and give them a huge tip. Seeing as I've taken up far too much of their time. Go on, here you are. Have all my monies. Have it all. Have it all. Thankfully, this car has plenty of cool features to help make up for all this. Here's five. To highlight this car's go anywhere capability, the Sport Chrono Pack includes a compass. It tells you which direction you're heading. So, oh, I'm heading through now south. And I'm, I'm going to go east. Look, I'm, I'm now going east. I definitely won't get lost now that I've spent over £700 on that optional upgrade. The leather seats have this little logo on them. It says Olea, and that means that the leather on these seats has been made with a tanning process which utilises olive leaves and therefore it's more sustainable. Unless, of course, you're the cow that has donated the leather, then not so sustainable for you, I'm afraid. If you're the kind of person that likes to go mountain biking, you can get a specific bike rack for this car from Porsche. Obviously, they'll charge you quite a lot for it, which means that when you fit it, you can still open the boot with the bikes attached to the car. Clever. The surround view cameras you can get with this car are really good. High definition and you can swipe around the car like that. And But you can see the cars we bought with us today. There's my GIA. One slight complaint though is that they haven't managed to match the colour of the car on there to the paint scheme of this particular car. Oh well, I'm going to forgive them because look at this. I have night view assist. I'll just select that and it says night vision is not to replace your attentiveness. Does that mean that I can't show my girlfriend this instead of buying her a gift for our anniversary. It's cool, it's my Yaris again. This Cross Turismo version of the Taycan gets a special gravel mode. Press that button and it sets up all the systems for driving on loose surfaces. So that includes the torque vectoring, the power delivery, the response of the steering wheel, everything. And of course the ride height. Speaking of which, this car can actually learn as you're driving along whenever you go over like a speed hump or a raised curb and it'll automatically raise up the air suspension so you don't bottom out. All right, let's talk about batteries and charging. First of all, check out the way you open the charging ports. This is for the AC socket. There's another one on the other side for DC. Speaking of which, each Porsche Taycan Cross Turismo gets an 84 kilowatt hour battery pack, and that's good for a range of up to 280 miles. In terms of charging, this car can actually charge at up to 270 kilowatts. Probably not gonna find a charger that quick in the UK, but if you can find one, then it'll charge from empty to 80% full in just over 20 minutes. More likely, you're gonna come across a 100 kilowatt charger, then it can go from empty to 80% full in just over 40 minutes. If you're doing it overnight using one of these sockets, an AC, Wallbox charger. It's going to take overnight to charge it all the way up. In terms of the models, well, starts at the 4, 4S, then the Turbo, which is what this is, and then the Turbo S. The performance of the entry level car is 476 horsepower and 500 newton meters of torque, rising all the way up to 761 horsepower maximum and 1050 newton meters of torque in the Turbo S model. It's quite a lot of power. Let's see what this Porsche Taycan Cross Turismo feels like to drive. So I'm starting off in normal mode. For this slightly off-roadery version of the Taycan, they've changed the suspension settings, so it's a bit softer. Now that's not to say that it's all floaty, 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 because it's still a Porsche Taycan and that's quite a firm car, but it is a little bit smoother, a little bit more relaxed than the normal Taycan. It does still have that tall edge though, so it feels sporty like a Porsche should, but it just leans a little bit more in the corners it just smooths out the bumps a little bit better and probably for day-to-day -day living especially in the uk i think this setup's preferable yeah when you throw into a corner at speed it's 
ball just grips and goes round, even though it's slightly high off the ground. It doesn't really make that much of a difference to the way it handles because the batteries, which is where all the weight is, still nice and low down. So despite the fact this thing weighs like around 2,300 kilos, it does an off corner really well. And then when you put your foot down, oh my gosh, it just flies. This turbo version has 680 horsepower, though that is when you're engaging launch control. And more on that in a moment, because I'm going to launch this car, I'm going to launch it with the suspension in the low setting and in the high setting for fun. But we'll come to that in a bit. When you're just driving normally, you only have a maximum of 625 horsepower. I say only, 625 horsepower. Yeah, <laughs> that's a lot. And this thing sure as shit shifts. Let's come out of normal mode and go into Sports Plus. So what that's done now is stiffened everything up. It's in maximum attack setting. This is the spoiest mode for the car. We've also got a sound dynamic pack on this car, so it's creating a noise, can you hear it? So I've now got more pronounced sounds. So when I accelerate, you get this. It's like a spaceship taking off. Then when you brake, It's a bit like your washing machine just coming off spin cycle and winding down. <laughs> God, the acceleration is nuts. <laughs> and the best thing about this car compared to the normal Taycan is that you can take it for some moderate off-roading if you wish. And Porsche has done quite a bit of B-roll of this car skidding around on gravel and stuff. So I'm gonna show you a little clip of that now because I don't have any gravel that I could do. Well, there's some gravel there. So I go into gravel mode. I'm going to go into gravel mode. Lifting up the suspension. Hopefully I won't get stuck. I'm bogging down actually, but it... Uh, 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 uh. Oh, oh. Yeah, enough of gravel mode. That's gravel designed for like trapping cars when they spin off the track. It didn't trap me, thank God. Oh, let's go again. Oh, let's get out of gravel mode. Let's go to sports mode. So when I put it into gravel mode, obviously it raises suspension. Now it's lowering it back down again, so I'm back in sports plus. Another thing this car has, because it's the turbo, you get torque vectoring across the rear axle so it can send more power to the rear wheel with the most grip. It's also got tungsten carbide coated brakes, which are like a halfway house between normal iron brakes and carbon ceramics. So they resist fade better than just normal iron brakes. Huge brakes as well, 410 millimeter discs at the front, gripped by six piston calipers. At the back, it's 385 millimeter disc gripped by four piston calipers. If you go for the Turbo S, you get carbon ceramics as standard. Anyway, let's check the braking out. Whoa, that braking is really strong. Obviously, when you're braking as well, if you do it a bit more smoothly, then you're using regen. You're recouping energy and putting it back in the battery to help maximize your range. Anyway, it's time to check out the acceleration. Okay, let's launch this car. According to Porsche, this Taycan Cross Turismo turbo should do 0 to 60 in 3.1 seconds which interestingly is 0.1 of a second slower than the normal Taycan even though it's only about like 15 kilos heavier maybe that's to do with the raised ride height just affecting drag or something but anyway let's launch I've got my special timing gear up here let's do it launch control activated that's brutal oh I love the gear change it's got Two speed transmission, 0 <laughs> 2.81. What's the quarter mile? 10.86. That is quick. <sighs> now let's try it again, but this time with a suspension raised to see if drag really does affect the acceleration. Okay, so I'm leaving the car in Sport Plus, but I'm going to change the chassis height now to lift. It's lifting. Bear with me. Okay, reset my specialist timing gear. Hopefully it'll let me do launch control. We'll find out now. Launch control activated, let's go. It feels just as quick. It's quicker than 62.8. <laughs> there goes my theory. What's a quarter mile though? 10.88 over the quarter mile. So even though I got more traction away from the line, and reduced my 0 to 60 time by 0.1 of a second, my quarter mile time went up by 0.2 of a second. So yeah, we did a little bit of science there that drag caused by increased ride height reduces your performance. 
the visitor slightly. Actually, if you're more about the race ride height because you want a performance electric car that can do some decent off-roading because it's higher off the ground, you might want to look at something like an Audi e-tron S. Do the full in-depth video review of that car. If you click on that pop-out banner up there, you can go watch that video. It's not quite as quick as this, but it's more off-roady. So then, what's my final verdict on the new Porsche Taycan Cross Turismo? Should you avoid it? Should you consider it? Should you shortlist it or should you just go right ahead and buy it? Well, if you're looking for an electric estate car that can also go off-road, you really have no choice. And so you should go right ahead and buy the Porsche Taycan Cross Turismo. It's also pretty blooming awesome. I hope you all enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a like. Also, let me know what you thought of it in the comments below. Be kind though, because I do read the comments and you don't want to upset me. Now, if you'd like to watch some more videos, just click on the windows there. And if you click on the box there, you can download the free CarWow app where you can check out all our different car reviews and also see how much money you can save on a new car through our trusted dealers. Trust me, we can save you a ton of cash. The app also includes a special car valuation tool where you can actually use your phone's camera to scan the number plate of a car and it'll tell you how much it's worth. Go download it, it's free.